My therapist keeps telling me that I need to learn to forgive and forget. I don't know if you remember how long you've been waiting for the next Bethesda game, because if you check the date, it's actually not that. Starfield is an open-world RPG set in space, sequel to the long-beloved classic Garfield. You explore planets in a spaceship that gets crowded by a subway's worth of NPCs, engage in tense shootouts, then collect gear and level up your character to feel as authentically you as possible. Made by Bethesda Studios, who are the best at making games where you marry the fast travel button, shoot civilians for fun, collect trash you don't want, and level up your character to feel as authentically you as possible. Granted, the game has also become the center of an ancient PlayStation vs. Xbox debate that I'm going to say we're all smarter than. I should start this off by saying I've got around 25 plus hours in Starfield, which is enough to understand where it's going, but not enough to understand every mechanic in depth. You might think that's unfair of me, but but I also paid the content creator fee, so I'm a bigger Starfield fan than 90% of you. Starfield opens with you creating your character. If you're a man, your character designing process is going to be white guy that is basically you, a girl that wouldn't talk to you, or ginger powder. If you're a girl, you roll a new OC that you will draw until all of Twitter mutes you. I went with someone Troy Baker would voice, so option one with an earring. Finally, you pick your traits, stuff that will fill out what your character will eventually be. Though the game isn't really too keen to tell you what they do, so when you accidentally make yourself a chef and there's a crafting mini game, there's no one to blame but Todd. The premise is, Oops, sorry, hit the fast forward button. Not for spoilers, just to give you a good idea of what the intro is like. The opening of Starfield is probably the weakest in Bethesda's entire library, as the game rolls into a ball to explain why you're suddenly the commander of a ship and a part of the coolest group of space explorers with a philosophy that isn't abhorrent like the rest of them. The first five hours of Starfield involve you sitting behind cover and killing people, and guns feel the same whether they're firing laser or lead. No regenerating health, and the combat arenas are fairly tiny, so I hope you're cool with inhaling drugs under pressure like your fucking Charlie Sheen. The game also does itself a disservice by tossing you into the worst arenas at the start. The robot companion they give you won't stop trying to remind you that he's a robot, while never hitting a single shot. I know I'm probably not alone on this impression, so I'm asking for those of you who say the combat's ass, I suggest you wait until the Starborn powers become available, because when I do it, I have to backspace an hour of work. Starfield's combat can be very lame in its opening hours. The most exciting thing you get to do is throw grenades, like this. Think fast, chuckle nuts! I thought fast. Thank God I had something on hand to protect us. That's why this video is sponsored by GMG Performance Glasses. Do you spend a lot of your time quickly glancing between two computer screens, then go outside only for people to comment that your eyes look like they've been looking for the hobbits? Most people spend several hours a day staring at screens which expose us to excessive amounts of blue light, causing serious eye strain, headaches, and messing with your sleep schedule. Creating content often leaves me up late at night staring at footage over and over again, giving me a splitting headache, and I can't tell if it's the blue light or the voices. GMG Performance Glasses act as a shield against blue light, reducing eye strain, improving your concentration, encouraging your eye reflexes, and maintaining the quality of your vision over the long term. It's literally an item you would find in a Bethesda game. I've got the optimizer model and I've been using it to edit the video you're looking at right now. I even tried it at the dead of night to make sure I was battling my worst demons. It also came with this really neat carrying case for all the high impact driving I do. And you can combine the glasses with their discount sleep aid gummies that does what League of Legends usually needs an hour for. For the next 48 hours, if you use my link in the description or a pinned comment, you could get both the glasses and the sleep gummies for 25% off. Thank you again to GMG Performance Eyeglasses for sponsoring this video. Alright, forgive me. Back to Mr. Sheffield over here. By the way, yes, that's me. I'm being very brave. The gist of Starfield is as such. You go to the menu, select a planet and a landing zone. Drop down, look around to see what it has to offer, sell or buy things, then go do a quest. The quest will either involve shooting or navigating a tense social situation, but a lot of the time it's both. Questing will reward you with gear and experience that you use to level up, giving you a perk point to pick from. Then, you do it again. Maybe boiling it down to a checklist downplays the humanity in it because, well, I like Starfield a lot. The thing about this loop is that it really works when you allow yourself to just take it in. I find myself enjoying the game less when I'm going through the motions. The best time I've had with the game is when I take my time and try to get immersed. 
Starfield is unique in that its space world is human-centric. The aliens you find are all primal. Starfield feels as though humanity runs the galaxy, and this is how they've adapted to each planet. Earth is a sandy wasteland. Then we kept running to new planets and found they too were sandy wastelands. So when we finally find one with breathable air and heroin fish, we get very excited. It's a broad universe out there, just one where everyone agreed to still hold on to 24 hour days. Starfield is also very keen on putting you on your ship. Your ship has limited power that is shared by all of its systems. If you want to power your shields, you may need to pull away some of the engine. The ship systems are cool, but you have to fast travel. You don't really get to enjoy it or play with it. Captain Baker over here can turn everything they'll need for a fight or everything they'll need for flight, and that's about it. The most you'll do is power up your batteries in a moment when you want to escape. The ship is more than an extra flavor of combat. It's also your home. You can explore the ship's interior at any point during your flight, which is the world's stupidest plus for me. It becomes your home away from home, somewhere safe and quiet, where you can take inventory, rest up and talk with your crew. It's a small piano away from being a Resident Evil safe room. Most of my money goes towards saving up for a new ship, which would fulfill all my needs while gently pushing me to extort all of the quest givers. The slightly cheaper option is to go into the ship builder. There's tons of swappable parts, meaning one of my ships doesn't have a fucking bed. Then you try to do it yourself and slowly realize that no one loves you enough to stop you from doing this. The shipbuilding rules are kind of like if you wanted to enjoy the homeowners association bureaucracy from the comfort of your home. Oh wait. No one loved me enough to do that, but I loved myself enough to realize I'm not going near that outpost building mechanic. I've heard there's some real cheese you can pull off, but I'm not staying on the ground. I'm like Ken, but my job is space. The story of Starfield puts you in a group called Constellation. Space explorers who are fascinated with artifacts. Magic bits of metal that defy rules of reality. Your job is to collect them, return to Constellation, and figure out why you're collecting them. But the main reason for doing this is that the artifacts also point you towards towers that give you otherworldly powers. Forgive the minor spoiler, but I want to talk about the power system because it helps the game by a mile. It's been almost eight years, so I can tell you with confidence that most of Fallout's combat is ass in comparison to Skyrim's. Yes, you can pick between the kind of gun you'll have, however, killing people tends to get kind of stale when that's all you can do. And yes, there are melee builds. They can keep them. If you really need to know the biggest choice you'll make in Starfield, it's he, she, or they. The powers mix up Starfield by allowing for more interesting playstyles and giving you an exciting progression. You can trace or blink around with a shotgun, you can give them a warlock melee. There are even some fun non-combat ones, like the one that lets you see what people will say in response to your dialogue options. Starborn powers follow this nice space theme. They're all related to things like gravity, time, and the stars. I've only gotten a third of them, but they've all come together nicely. You can still fumble the bad bitches, which is now exceptionally impressive. I would say it's a halfway between Skyrim and Fallout's combat, though I also kind of just hate Fallout 4, so I've been waiting this long. Of course, it is a Bethesda game, so sometimes your marriage hits a low point, and you'll notice the fast travel button stuck someone inside a wall. In Silent Hill, you stick your hands in a wall and it gets bitten off. Stick your hands in a Starfield wall and it stays there. Not that Bethesda games can maintain their immersion that well. This is a game where you'll get into an intense space dogfight against pirates with a gas giant in the background, then they'll give you a notification that you've sent 500 credits to mom and dad. On the other side though, there are tons of little details. Planets even have different gravity, like the moon. So Starfield is technically the biggest open world in the industry, which only gets funnier when I have to tell you that it's actually the second biggest open world, full of distinct planets and wackaloons with religious conspiracies to be shot. But not your wackaloons with religious conspiracies. Bethesda games also come with social systems that make it feel alive. There's multiple factions, companions with opinions on what you do, and laws to follow. It's supposed to make you feel bad when you see a dance floor and turn on your favorite song. That said, I'm not too fond of this exact approach to the open world. Skyrim feels big because you have to take long walks to find new cities. If you want to do that in Starfield, I hope you've got seven hours on your hands, only to have to hit the fast travel button anyway. I understand that making the technology to land on the planet would probably end up with a lot of people merging with it, but the flip side is that you are always in menus, so the world feels weird. 
You're exploring a lot, but in scattered, condensed bursts. Instead of painting a line from A to B, you flick the entire brush at the canvas. Also, just like its older brother, Starfield is barren if you're not in a place that the game wants you to be. The game ends up feeling like a collection of hub worlds with occasional dips into caves. When you're where the game wants you to be, the vibe is fucking awesome. Each city has a distinct culture to it. Aquila City is a dustier, Wild West sort of place. Neon City is Night City in a trench coat that somehow makes it small and New Atlantis, which houses your crew of Constellation, who are really lucky that their conspiracy theory is actually right. You know what they say, one person's crew is another person's cult. Starfield's not beautiful, per se. You're not gonna search up videos of New Atlantis Walk 4K ASMR, but there's a strange intimacy to looking around and being weird and existing in shit. I've turned into something of a heads-up display communist lately, so I would recommend you turn off the objective markers and rely on the compass. Only turning it back on if I'm more lost than Charlie Sheen in heaven. But there's also a million bases scattered around that look like the shit version of Fort Solus. By the way, try this game. It got some heat for a bad map and some awkward story beats. But there's some people out there who might enjoy this walking sim. Sorry, I was never gonna find a place to say that anywhere else. Each planet is unironically mapped out, and you can land in any spot on them. Yet, I can't tell if the scale is just for show, because it really doesn't do the game any favors. It's inoffensive because you at least know when you're heading towards a barren wasteland where the most impressive thing you'll find is a scannable bush. In the actual areas, there are a ton of little touches to them. Look at individual signs, find a store, sell what you have, see new people, get wrapped up in a wild quest. Then you end up in places where you start to ask too many questions. Like how the biggest nightclub in the game only has one bartender, and if you tip him $25 million, he'll give you a penthouse. These questions feel great. The writing isn't overwhelming or bringing me to tears, but it's a chock above what I expected. I cared about a decent number of the side characters, despite the fact that they all do the Bethesda thing where the first thing out of their mouth is the most important detail of their life, and how this person they picked out of the crowd on sheer vibes needs to know about it. I'm just saying these people have no right to be surprised when I levitate them for a laugh. I know we're all still very angry that I didn't beat the game before making this video, but looking back I very much could have. Then I would have missed out on on these and fucking hated the game. The main quest is certainly not bad, but a lot of the optional content had a stronger hook. This is a spectrum though. On one end, you can just end up with mercenaries to kill, and on the other, you can get the space version of the fucking 1914 Christmas truce. My personal favorite was when I was in an abandoned prison a mile below the crust of an ice planet with pirates, looking for a breadcrumb trail of a legendary money stash, fighting off waves of burrowing monsters that came from every angle. It's hard not to hear the creepy music, see the steel blue coloring, and that emptiness, then be like, oh shit. The Callisto Protocol didn't need those elaborate death scenes to get the vibe it wanted. The part that drives me up the wall is the inventory. The game loves its crafting system, but isn't really interested in telling you how it works. What trash to grab, and what trash to ignore, and where to find stuff you want, and when you don't want it. If you want to give your gun fancy lights or just a compensator, I hope you're alright with discovering you had raw titanium in your pocket. I'm sure there's a relatively simple system that explains what trash to pick up, but fuck you. Getting over encumbered has always been a pain in the ass in these kind of games, to be fair. At least Starfield doesn't slow you down for it. It just makes you choke on CO2. You could always stuff that garbage in your companion's pockets. Maybe you could even try your parents. They're sworn to carry your burdens in a way that you could never have verbalized. You can choose if you have parents, by the way. There's a big list of traits, so most of the player base is orphaned or worse with the adoring fan. There are also five paths for your character to take. Physical, social, combat, science, and tech. They're mostly self-explanatory, except for science and tech. These ones primarily focus on crafting, just to make sure you have to collect garbage and tango with being over-encumbered. There likely is a build out there that answers all of your problems, and you will almost certainly find it anyway, because the game doesn't have a level cap. Thankfully, I don't have to recommend the optimal perks for you to unlock first, because min-maxing in a Bethesda game isn't what you came here for. You don't find a meta in Bethesda games. You find a build that feels the most authentic to your intentions. Once I got past the tight corridor shooting, the game slowly built up into what it's supposed to be. My character ended up as a pistol and laser rifle user who could channel their social skills to gain an edge, then fire off powers. It's not exactly Baldur's Gate, but the fact that you get there by taking individual steps gives your character a weight and history to them. 
Hell, your character will probably end up OP no matter what you do. It's not a Bethesda game if you can't bullshit your way through with a system that didn't get enough foresight. There was an entire spaceship of people trying to kill me, and I individually talked down each one like I was that one video of Michael Jackson. I could probably beat the game like that, and the only thing stopping me is that I don't want to play that shit. Like, yeah, you can also probably beat Fallout 4 by putting all of your points in luck and perception, then grab a sniper rifle, but for who? You don't need to maximize your build to beat some guy who's trying to do the same. Do you really think this giant monster is saving up for an op? There's nothing on the line. No guy you need to stick it to. And if there was a guy you needed to stick it to, I've got some bad news. He's already won. The game is already spinning around in the internet's weave. Some people are downright furious with it. But I already spoiled my answer early. I like Starfield. I liken this game to eating something your parents used to make. You haven't had it in a while and you think, yes, I've seen someone make this better, but I miss it. It's a clunky Bethesda game with good side quests and a lot of atmosphere too. That's my way of saying I'm on Team Starfield good. But just because I'm on Team Starfield good, doesn't mean I'm on Team Bethesda good. Most of Fallout 76's pure evil didn't make it in, but let's not act like they still would have made this game the way it is if that actually worked. Instead, they just found things that they would get away with, like the $100 digital premium edition that most games wouldn't bother pushing our way. Bethesda found a way to rub its nipple though, so the digital premium edition gave you the game an extra five days early. In a world of hyper algorithms and short attention spans, that's pretty valuable, so it mostly just fucking affected people like me. Starfield is a great game. Side quests are a blast, the combat is really diverse and exciting. Hell, a lot of the jank is more funny than it is obnoxious. Just never forget that if you type in falloutfirst.com, you go to a parody site at Bethesda's expense. And if I get you on the ground, don't even think about starting to forgive. I just want to float a quick apology to the crafting fanatics. I have a feeling I have insulted quite a lot of you. Lord knows the last guy who was really good at space crafting did some interesting things. Anyway, before we wrap up, I'd like to thank the people on Patreon who made this video possible. I would especially like to thank Jonah Simpson, My Reed, Coldeneye One, Colorado Ranger, Andrew Phillip, Anthony R. Chambers, Daniel Askew, Ethan A., Ethan Blow, Fay Lynn, Walker, Average, Mint Skull, Mr. Macaroni Man, Pyrozine, Rec Ren, Stormfeather, Sir Coffee, Spark Bolt 120, The Jewel Man, Tracy Leroy, and Zetsik. Thank you again for watching. I've got another video in the pipeline that I hope to show you guys sometime soon. And now that this is done with, I think I'm gonna go play some more Starfield.